Japanese sports cars have always felt unique. Made famous by iconic names like GTR, NSX and MX-5, they have an intangible quality that sets them apart from rivals from Europe and America. And now, there's a new one. One that revives a badge that's the stuff of legend, of myth, a name that hasn't been sold in Australia for almost 30 years, but one that still defines an entire subculture of car lovers. Welcome everyone to the all new Toyota Supra. Only there's a problem. Because even though this car has a Toyota badge stuck to its nose, this reborn Supra isn't that Japanese. In fact, it's hardly Japanese at all. Making sports cars is expensive, especially ones from scratch like this. So to ensure that this new Supra is profitable, Toyota sought out BMW to help make it. But that means that underneath this fifth generation Supra is basically a BMW Z4. Its platform, the engine, all of the suspension hardware, the electronics, a big part of the interior, even the key, are all BMW parts. In fact, this new Supra isn't even built in Japan. It's made in Austria. All of this has made this Supra very controversial and divisive and confusing. How can this be a true Supra, a car that sits at the very epicenter of Japanese car culture, if it's not very Japanese? It seems that everybody has an opinion, from car lovers to super enthusiasts, even motoring journalists. But I don't. I've never owned a Supra. I've never driven a Supra. In fact, before today, I'd never even sat in one. So all I'm interested in is how that thing performs as a sports car. And to find out, I'm taking it to one of the best driving roads in Victoria. This 50 kilometre stretch of road runs from Glen Maggie to La Cola through plunging valleys and over tight, twisty mountain passes. It's everything we need to find out if this is a real Supra. So let's forget all of that nonsense about whether this is a real Supra or not and consider the facts. This car still sticks to the Supra philosophy. It's still rear wheel drive, it's still recognisably a Supra to look at, and trust me, this is one of those cars that looks about 50 times better in the metal than it does on your telly. And crucially, under the bonnet is still a straight six petrol engine. The result of all of this is that the fifth gen Supra is a really competent sports car. It's crisp, it's responsive, it's balanced, it's quick. The last Supra had one of the all-time great engines, the 2JZ. But this time around, Toyota didn't have a six-cylinder petrol engine of its own. And that's a big reason why they went to BMW to help make this car. BMW makes great inline six pots, and this engine is no exception. Three litres in capacity, single turbocharger, 250 kilowatts, 500 newton metres. It can propel the car from 0 to 100 in just over four seconds, 4.3 seconds with launch control. And it's a great donk. It's smooth, sounds pretty good, heaps of mid-range punch. It kind of does run out of puff a little bit above 5,500 RPM, but because of that, you can stay in a gear higher, even on really twisty roads like this. Corners you think you might need second gear, you can shoot out of in third and just surf the torque. It's really satisfying. Even better news is that there's still compliance to the suspension. The temptation must have been so strong to make this thing super stiff and to increase its focus and make it really sharp and agile, but they've resisted that temptation and the Supra is all the better for it. It's a car that still breathes with the road. The adaptive dampers has two options. I prefer having them in comfort rather than sport. You chuck it in sport and it does sort of firm things up and the body control becomes much more vice-like, but the onboard computer allows you to separate the dampers out from the other settings. So you can have the gearbox and the engine and the steering all in their sport settings, but keep the dampers in comfort, which is really important to be able to separate that out. 
But it's in here when you sit in the Supra that the BMW influence is hardest to ignore. Most of the cabin architecture, the buttons, the dials, the infotainment system, even the fonts for the infotainment system are all obviously BMW. Is that a problem? Not to me. Look, having BMW parts in your Toyota, I'd be really annoyed if it was the other way around, but it's not. So I don't think it's something to screw your nose up against. But it does, however, see the ugly question of, is this a real Supra, raise its head once again. In isolation, this car is hugely capable and genuinely surprising. It's quick, it's agile, I think it looks great, and it's a surprise to drive. It's much better than I was expecting, actually, and it does feel like it's in the mix against proven and excellent rivals like the Alpine A110 and BMW M2 competition. But does it feel Japanese? Does it have that magic, that intangible quality of engineering perfection and craziness that only seems to emanate from the land of Godzilla? No, it doesn't. There are hints of its own character here, but if you close your eyes, the Supra feels very German. It even smells like a BMW. But the bigger question is whether or not that actually matters. I don't think anybody could say that in isolation, this car is anything but a very convincing sports car. And anyway, consider the alternative. If Toyota hadn't called up BMW, we wouldn't even have a new Supra at all. So let's all stop complaining and just appreciate it. Mm -hmm.